If you've spent any amount of time looking into the microbiome, in particularly dysbiosis, then you've probably come across the idea of stool testing. That's right, testing your feces, and this is going to give you some good idea about the dysbiosis, the level of dysbiosis, as well as what particular microbes may be causing some sort of issues with you. I'm here to tell you, maybe it's a waste of money. Let's dig into it. And today we're looking at stool testing and why this may be a big waste of money. If you look at stool testing tests across the market, the cost to the consumer can seriously range and it is not always the most comfortable thing to look at. So, you know, on the cheaper end of the spectrum, we have it in the mid hundreds up to about like $500, $800 even for a super comprehensive test is something that I've seen and is not unusual. But how much data it is going to be yielded from these tests that's the first question and number two is does it does it really matter that much the problem is sometimes that test information doesn't even give you information that would change the treatment plan okay and i'll dig into that right now so when you do a stool test you're basically trying to do a population study now imagine that i'm doing a population study in an actual city like a, a city think of it a neighborhood okay and i'm trying to figure out how many people live there as well as you know what everyone sort of looks like in their ages we'll say ages so imagine i just walk through the town and all i take count of are the people that i see out on the streets or those that i can see through the windows that's not going to give me the most accurate representation of everyone that is there. Is that correct? And unfortunately, when it comes to stool testing, it works a very similar way in that many of these tests, we're only seeing certain species and because of their dwelling place. Some of them are sidewalk dwellers. Some of them, you can kind of see them just through the windows. But what about the people who are like deep into their bedrooms or in their living rooms? You can't really see that. The same thing lies true with these microbes because you have three layers in your gut and that's going to be the lumen which is like the roadway the passageway then there's the mucus layer which we'll call that kind of the the sidewalk or just like window watching and um deeper inside would actually be within the cell wall itself and when you take a stool test and stool samples you're not getting that deepest layer and you're typically not getting too much of that middle layer either so as you can imagine, when you're taking that stool sample, you're only getting a partial story, and that's incomplete picture, unfortunately, of what's going on. So one thing to note is the mucus dwellers that are in your mucus, these actually can connect with your nervous system. They actually have inter intertwine with it and can influence your nervous system the most. So that would be probably one of the most important populations to actually understand and get a full read on, but if the stool test isn't actually getting a read on them, how, what value does that have, I wonder? <clears throat> so another factor is that different companies are gonna have different results. There's a lot of doctors that I've that I learned from and know, know of that they send their patients uh, stool t test samples to two different companies at exactly the same time and they'll get back different results. That can be really problematic when you're trying to treat a patient for you know particular uh, microbe. That's a real issue. So, you ever heard this, the quote, if you hear the sound of hoof prints, then it's probably not zebras. You should just think of horses because horses are far more common. There's nothing wrong with treating what we call empirically. And that means if all signs are pointing to this type of infection or this type of dysbiosis, it's okay to treat it that way. As long as it's not going to do any harm, it's not going to make the patient worse, and if there's a really good chance it's going to benefit them, it's okay to treat that without actually having the stool test results in hand, which is there's general antimicrobial herbs that can be placed on most people who have some sort of dysbiosis and they will get a lot better. There's nutrients you can give them and they will get a lot better. So it's when people aren't getting better, that's when I feel is the best time to resort to stool testing. Otherwise, if you do it too early on, maybe you're treating something that isn't actually causing the symptom. Maybe you're treating something that isn't really the issue because you don't have the real full picture. And I hope this presentation is eye-opening because obviously stool testing is important. It has its value, value in some areas and dysbiosis is so prevalent nowadays. We need to be taking action on it, but it's okay to treat people safely and we'll have good results with that. 
I know I do in my practice, and I don't always have to reach for stool testing. Hope you learned something today. This is Dr. Brian Preece. Have a great one.